Okay, we are Jesse and JD with iHeartRadio, and we are joined via Zoom by Rick Springfield. How are you, Rick? I am awake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rick, there's uh, there's so much to talk to you about. You got a brand new book out, World on Fire. You're celebrating the 40th birthday of Working Class Dog. You've got a uh, beautiful new rum that we've been drinking, and I figured we could start with uh, your Beach Bar rum here. There you go. Cheers, buddy. Um, because you know, we've all been drinking a lot during the pandemic, uh, probably excessively. We got the May long weekend coming up and what's cool about uh, this rum, man, is not only does it taste good, uh, but you've also got another famous buddy you teamed up with on this rum, Sammy Hagar. How, how does that come about for you, buddy? Well, you know, I mean, I've known Sammy since, uh, 80, 1980, he wrote, uh, I've done everything for you. Um, and we've been friends, you know, through that whole time. And, uh, he heard that I wanted to get into the liquor business and that I particularly liked rum. And rather than making me a competitor, he had offered to make me a partner in his, and I tried it. And it's amazing. I mean, this is my favorite is the cola spice. Same. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's great stuff. And he's, you know, I mean, he's got a great record for, uh, for, you know, getting right in there and knowing exactly what he's doing. He did it with uh, the Cabo Wabo tequila, <clears throat> and he's doing it with this, too. As a uh, as a religious reader of People magazine, I understand you've had a lot of sex during the pandemic. Um, how much yeah. of that can we attribute to Beach Bar Rum being an aphrodisiac? Can you confirm or deny? That actually is typical People magazine crap where I make a joke right. about they say, what have you been doing during the pandemic? I said, oh, I've been having a lot of sex with my wife. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> they take that. They take that and make that the friggin' headline, you know? So that's just typical of them. But um, uh, this is definitely an aphrodisiac. Yes. Okay, good, good. Just wanted to clarify. Listen, you know, um, you've been pretty open about, about your struggles with, me- with mental health. You know, I, I think that's super admirable. Somebody with a platform speaking so, so earnestly and so honestly about a, a really important topic like that, especially as, as guys, uh, you know, a, a topic that we at times have struggled to, to talk about. Um, how's your pandemic mental health been? I know for all of us, it's been, um, it's been a trying year and a bit. And I think we've all had to learn a little bit on the fly. You know, what's been working for you on the mental health front during a, a pretty strange, you know, 12 to 18 months. Yeah, it's it's been difficult. I've had my uh, I've had my hard moments, um, but uh, one thing I, I I got into was actually meditation, which I got into back in uh, the early '80s, and then fell away from it. And my wife actually got me back into it, and um, it's been pretty uh, instrumental in in keeping my head straight through the, the you know when it when I get when I go dark. Is what I call it. I, I go I go dark pretty regularly, and uh, uh, the meditation has really been the one thing that has has truly helped. Truly helped. I mean, you know, this doesn't hurt, but <laughs> but it has a downside the next morning. Um, you know, but uh, yeah, the meditation has really helped me, and and being connected to to my home has actually been great. I, I feel bad for the. You know, I have a friend who's uh, uh, on suicide watch right now. He lost his home. He lost his his wife. Uh, it kind of all fell apart, you know, and different people have it's affected uh, different people differently. So um, it, it, it's been brutal. It's been a brutal year, but it's I think it, it, it uh, it's changed a lot of things permanently. And uh, I think up here, too. We, uh, you know, the rock station we work at, we, we spent the better part of this week remembering the great Chris Cornell. It, it's hard to believe that, that he's been gone as, as long as he has. I know, you know, you've spoken a, a lot about, um, you know, the passing of Chris, but also some memories of Chris. Is, is there one specific memory when I say Chris Cornell? What, what do you think about when, when, when the name Chris Cornell comes up? Jesus Christ pose. <laughs> one of the greatest songs. Uh, it, you know, I know him and, and Chester, too, from... Uh, <clears throat> from Lincoln Park, you know, and and somebody uh, like Robin Williams, who had everything, but it's you know, I mean, people have asked me. They said, "What do you what do you got to be depressed about? You know, you you have you know you have money, you've had some success, you know, you're doing a lot of the things you love. That is almost a panacea, 
you know, that becomes the thing to try and make you better and to feel better about yourself. And in the end, none of that matters. And I learned that in 1985 when I was like walking around the biggest house I'd ever lived in in Malibu. And I, <clears throat> and I had my first son. Um, I had a bunch of successful records and I was probably more depressed than I've ever been. And I realized then that all the outward stuff has, it, it heals you for a while. You know, it's like, oh, I, I got a new car. I'll feel great for a couple of weeks. But in the end, it all comes, you know, back. It's just you. You get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and it's still you. And uh, that that's that's really, you know, it, it's something that's up there. And uh, I it, I wish I could go to rehab. You know, I wish it was like uh, I wish I had, you know, like a, a cocaine problem and I could go to rehab and get over it. But uh, depression is a life sentence and you just got to learn to deal with it. I, I've written a lot about it. I've talked a lot about it. And um you know, we've certainly, like you said, uh, certainly seen some incredibly tragic ends to some people who, uh, you know, we all have it. We all have darkness in us, um, some more than others. I think I know two people who are permanently happy and they really piss me off. <laughs> well, Rick, uh, you know, I'm glad that you share that story because uh, like J.D. said, it, it does help a lot of guys when we when we normalize mental health and speaking about it. And, you know, that's another thing that you're known for, but, you know, you're, you're known for so many things. And, and we wanted to talk to you about a couple of those things. Of course, you're known as, you know, being a musician. It's the 40th anniversary of uh, Working Class Dog. You're known as an author. You're known as now a promoter of Beach Bar Rum, which is out all over Canada. And, you know, you're, you're such a big star and, and you bring people back with so many different memories. I was uh, at the dentist the other day and they always check in with me like, hey, Jesse, like, what are you up to lately? And I'll, I told them, I was like, hey, I'm interviewing Rick Spring. Springfield uh, this week and the girls got all giddy and they were like working class dog. I love that album. I remember where I was when uh, I got it, you know, take us back to that time 40 years ago when, when you were writing that album and getting ready to produce it. Did you ever think, you know, 40 years down the line, a couple kids uh, in their basement via zoom would still be talking to you about that record. Joe Walsh said, if I knew I was going to be playing this song for the rest of my life, I would have written a different song, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm actually, I'm actually very, uh, very proud of the Working Class Dog album. We, we actually did. I got the band together for the first time in a year and a half. And we, we played Working Class Dog all the way through the whole album. And we recorded it. And we're going to put it out. Uh, let's call the, you know, I, could, I did it in my living room. So, I mean, I have a studio in my house and it was fed into the studio. But we're all sitting around my living room and playing those songs. Um, I realized that they were good songs. You know, they had, they all had a... Uh, hooks they all had great hooks and they were short and I really wrote them because I didn't think I was ever going to get a record deal at that point so you know the knack had just been discovered in LA clubs and I thought okay that's the way I'll go I'll, I'll write a bunch of uh, <clears throat> you know three minute songs that I can play with a three-piece band and you know Folks, if you don't like this one, there's another one coming right along. You know, that kind of thing. I'll tell you, as a, as a guy with the name Jesse, the big Sorry. joke, every girl that I would date, I would come meet the dad. They'd be like, Jesse's girl. I wish that I had Jesse's girl. I had to deal with that my entire life. But, you know, Rick, Sorry, I, um, Rick, you know, we saw that you've got some tours uh, coming up. You've got some shows booked for the summer going into the fall. As a music fan, we, you know, we can't wait to get back to normal, especially here in Canada where we're still locked down and go attend a live show again. I can only imagine what that feels like for you to get out there and be able to perform again. You know, what are you looking forward to most when it comes to going back out and, and playing a show? Uh, working out. I, I get my aerobic workout on stage, uh, so I'll be able to lose my COVID 10 pounds. So I'm real excited about that. But I, I, the, for me, the live thing is about a connection with the audience. You know, I mean, that's obviously this is like so anti-human us, you know, passing each other 10 feet on the street and, it, and the whole, uh, it's, a, it's a communal thing when you go to a concert. That's why I don't think there will ever be, uh, the virtual concerts will happen, but, but it, it's, it's the, being in a room full of people who are there for the same reason and who love the same music. Uh, it's a really powerful thing. And, and uh, there's nothing like it. Uh, I've done stage where, you know, I did a, a Broadway thing and 
and I've, you know, like I've done a lot of acting, but that's all about, you know, cutting off the audience. I mean, you got, it's about fate, you know, dealing with the character and, and, uh, and, and, and kind of keeping up the fourth wall. Well, with a live performance, I mean, it's all about, embracing the audience and and i think that's why a lot of actors also uh want to be musicians because they get that uh my final question i'd be remiss if i didn't ask uh because i gotta know and and you can take this as an opportunity for a very organic plug uh for beach bar room if you want or you can give me your actual secret how do i look like you at your age you look incredible and i want to know what your secret is do i have to make a deal with the devil rick what do i have to do um there it is you must you must <laughs> You must drink this. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I've, my, my dad died early, you know, and um, and I think sons uh, uh, take notice of how their what their father dies from. And uh, my dad died from, you know, the, a terrible diet. He was in World War Two and it was the whole food thing that kind of screwed up his body. So from that moment on, I started uh, reading all I could about the best way to feed my body and that's i guess that's really kind of all i've done you know is i work out and i try and eat as cleanly as i can um i try and i i'm doing what i love which is also really important um but you know like i, I still have to deal with uh you know the dark moments and um yeah but uh, i don't know that's well, I, <laughs> I asked my mom and dad <laughs> Well, Rick, uh, you do look incredible. We're, we're so happy for you to come on here with us and uh, iHeartRadio and share some stories like you did. And uh, everybody, Beach Bar Rum. JD, we got to get you a bottle. This is uh, some great stuff to be drinking, especially heading into the long weekend here in Canada. Come on, drink up, baby. You got, you got the whole weekend to recover. Awesome. Rick, thanks for your time. We really appreciate it today. It was great to, to get a few minutes with you. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. See you, buddy.